If you have something recorded in one GarageBand project, but you want to copy it and paste it into another GarageBand project in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live. Today, where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. We're back in GarageBand. I'm continuing to work on my song, Timber Song, here in the month of September 2020. And I've come across a bit of a problem. I've got version 8 here of my project, which has a whole bunch of tracks in it. But the way that I manage my version control is like this. As I continue creating, you'll see here, we have Song Timber 2020. Every time I update something significant, I duplicate the project and create a new version. I'll show you what I mean here now. If I tap select and I select on number eight and hit duplicate, there you go. Number nine is created. Now, this is a great way to make sure that you've got a backup, but it also can do something else, which is what I'm going to show you in this one. If you've done something in a previous version that you've since deleted, which I've done, but you want to bring it back, here's an easy way to do it. So let's jump in here to version nine, the latest version we just created of the project. Here's all my tracks. I've got guitars, I've got vocals, I've got keys, and I've got bass. And bass is what I'm working on at the moment because if you've watched some of the previous videos, friend of the channel, Jade Star recorded a killer bass line, which I then used some of her parts and my parts to re-record a brand new one. That's why it's called Pete Jade Hybrid because I took what I thought were the best of her bits and the best of my bits and created one bass line. But here's the problem. There was one part that Jade played really well that I didn't replicate properly, and it's this part in here. So if we come down to here, let's just play this part along with the rest of the track. Sounds like this. Watch out. It's coming for you. So the bass line that I played here went like this, as you would have heard. It was... And I thought that's what Jade played, but when I listened back, I was like, it's not quite right. And you know the problem, I'd already cleaned up the track and deleted Jade's track from before, but no problem. Here's all we need to do. We need to close out of that one. Now, I happen to know that I still have Jade's version back in version 7 here. So, yes, it's going to take up a bit of space using version control like this, but it's super handy for things like this. So, here is Jade's bass track, her test track. All we need to do to copy this from this old version to our new project is to copy and paste it from here. So, I'm just going to tap on the waveform itself, tap again, and come up and tap copy. Now, I can actually close out of this project. GarageBand will keep that in memory and then we can come back in here to our version 9 project. Now to make sure I've still got my two versions here to compare, what I'll do is I'll tap on my track, this time right on the icon so that we can get to our track options. I'm going to tap duplicate and there you go. I've now got two versions of this particular track. So what we can do now is go right back to the start, tap here in this blank space, hit our paste button and boom, there you go. We've got Jade's bass track ready to go. So the part that I actually want, as you saw before, is from bar 84 here. So what I can do is tap there, tap again, tap the split button. I can split that one out. I can tap here, tap and delete because my bass part is fine right up to that point. Then I want Jade's bass to come in until right on here, this bar, bar 100 when we come back into this. But you can see here that, that that last hit's just a little before there. So I've zoomed in just so that I can come back on that one and that's where we'll split it. I'll split it across both tracks. I'll show you why in a minute. Split and tap and split. There you go, that is done. So now what we can do is simply pull out the part, we'll delete this end part here, but I can pull out my part, tap it, tap again, hit delete, and now because this is a duplicate of this track, it's going to have all the exact same settings, the same bass amp settings, the same plugins and EQ. Now you can see Jade's bass was a little recorded a little bit hotter than mine, so we may need to bring the volume down, but that's okay, we can do that afterwards. So now let's come back and take a listen to this transition now, and uh, you'll hear my bass go into Jade's bass uh, seamlessly on this track. Let's hit play. You. Now you might have not have heard it there, but let's solo it in there. I probably want, actually want to turn Jade's bass up because I really like it. If you hear what she did here on the second part, so uh, we'll play it here. Really cool, grungy bass. Then, so it was that do do do. 
I went do do in my version. So I wanted that do do do, but the way I tried to play it just wouldn't come out. So I wanted Jade's version in there. So now we can come back in here. We can make sure that we mix this level in properly. So we'll hit play. Ready or not. Four, four. When you feel you cool. So that's come together really nicely. So now what we can do if we wanted to, we can just shimmy this back up. So if I wanted to just bring this back into one track, which I'm going to do, I'm going to keep this bass line in here. So we just grab it, we very carefully move it up and you see that little line over there to the left? Make sure that that remains static because it's very easy to shift things around a little bit and you're going to get things off the grid if you do that. So carefully pull it on up. We've now got a nice transition there. And if we check there, you can see that because the gap's in between there, don't put the gap right on there. Otherwise, you're going to get that clicks and pops and crunches if you're bringing two takes together. This is a good tip, a bonus tip here, is to make sure that if you're splitting, don't split right on there most of the time because you tend to, especially with guitars, you'll tend to get some clicks in there. So we've given it a little bit. Let's just check the transition, shall we? Now that we have this new bass line in here from this back in to my bass in the next section here. All good, yeah. Now the tone's slightly different. It's Jade's bass versus my bass, but you know what? Because it's a different section, it's actually cool. It's almost like you kicked in a, a pedal, like a compressor pedal or something on the bass. So I think it sounds good. And when we get to final mixing, we might want to do something like come in here to settings and maybe turn the gain down. Just use clip gain on that section just to balance things out. We'll work that out when we get to the final mix. But there you go. How cool is that? We can move things between one project and another. Now you might be thinking, that's cool for audio, Pete. What about drums? What about drummer? What about virtual instruments? Well, let's just quickly show you that we can do that just as easily before we finish up. So once again, we're going to dive into a previous version of the project here, because what you can see is originally I had this heavy metal organ here that came in at the start, which I muted out and then I deleted. If I want to bring this back in though, it's coming here from, uh, from bar three. We just solo this, the organ's doing this. Just a very simple sort of pad sound that's in there with the organ. Well, we can use the exact same process as we did with our audio file. We can tap on this one, tap again, and tap copy. This time we're only copying MIDI note data. So keep in mind, you need to send it to the same type of instrument. So if it's a keyboard type instrument, it needs to go to keyboard, strings to strings, drummer to drums, drums, to, you, you, get the, you get the gist here. You can't send some drums and try and paste them into a keyboard track just won't work. So if we come out of that one, we come back into version nine and we're like, yep, we want we want that little bit back here. We've got a couple of options here. We can do the same thing again by creating a new track. So we can do that duplicate track trick again. Track trick, gotta say that uh, very slowly. Duplicate track trick. We come in here, we make sure we're lined up on bar three. We tap, we tap again, we hit paste. Boom, there it is, it's back in there. Now, of course, if we undo that, undo, if we just wanted to bring it straight back in onto that track, well, we can do that really easily because all we need to do is line up on that track, make sure that we're right there on bar three, tap, hit the paste button, and boom, it's right back in there. We can start editing and playing with it. So that's super cool. And the other cool thing is, uh, as you probably noted, if we wanted to change that and bring that onto, say, a different instrument, what if we wanted to bring this onto this lead instrument? Well, no problem. We just tap there and we hit paste. And there you go. Because it's MIDI note data, it can go onto any instrument. So if we wanted to try all this on this other instrument and hit play, it's very quiet, but That actually sounds kind of cool. I'm going to leave that there for now and then get really confused as to why it's there when I go to mix this song later. But <laughs> there you go. Whatever your types of audio or MIDI or tracks are, if you want to move them from one project to another, that's the way to do it. Very cool feature. Makes life very easy and convenient here in GarageBand. I hope you found this useful. There's a heap more tips in the videos there and there, including my GarageBand Essentials playlist. If you're just getting started with GarageBand, that's the place to start. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you next time.